Hey guys, what's up? This is a uh, big ass collection update on all kinds of stuff. Uh, specifically stuff that my friends and family have uh, got me for Christmas. Got me stuff for Christmas. So, figured I'd show some stuff here. Um, I guess I'll start with uh, what I have the most of, which is the Blu-rays and DVDs. Grab a big stack off the top of this box right here. Um, I got Bloody Pit of Horror, which is like based on the writings of the Marquis de Sade. Uh, this is uh, Bloody Pit of Horror. I watched a couple months ago. I thought this was a pretty entertaining little mid-60s kind of... Uh, it's a public domain film, and so it's released by uh, Mutant Sorority Pictures. But... I actually quite like Bloody Pit of Horror. I thought that was a pretty entertaining little movie. Uh, Skullheads. This one just looks terrible. And it's directed by Charles Band, I think. Yep. Written and directed by Charles Band. And it looks... It looks, uh... Let me just say, it looks... It looks rightfully fucking terrible. Um, Sledge. Which, it says on the back, it, it, it's not a slasher, it's a sledger. Um, and on the front it says, uh, he didn't drown, he didn't get burnt, he's just a psycho with a sledgehammer. This sounds, uh, pretty bad. The last movie I watched with, with a sled, with a sledge in the title was Sledgehammer. And that movie is pretty bad. Um, Stephen King's Dead Zone, with Christopher Walken. I actually think this is a pretty good, uh, little kind of psychic film directed by David Cronenberg of all people. Proof that he can do stuff outside of the body horror genre which he's proven because he hasn't really done anything body horror-esque since like the 90s. Uh, this double feature of In the Year 2889 and Revenge of the Venus Flytrap which uh, this is from Oldies which Oldies is um is a company that essentially releases cheap budget releases of like cult films that are easy to get the rights to and the film Revenge of the Venus Flytrap is apparently based on a uh based on a screenplay that is is adapted from a screenplay written by Ed Wood and Ed Wood is great so why not uh Ralph Bakshi's Coonskin um I got a lot of black exploitation films this year people bought me a lot of black exploitation but I'm not going to complain uh, Ralph Bakshi's Coonskin. Really like this film. This is actually one of Ralph Bakshi's best films. Up there with, like, Fritz the Cat and Heavy Traffic. Um, this film was, like, kind of called racist when it came out. But the whole point of the film is to show how, uh, racial stereotypes are absolutely ridiculous. So they make every single character an accentuated racial stereotype. It's, 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 it's a brilliant piece of cinema. And, um, I really like it. I really like Coonskin. Uh, got even more here. Oh. Okay, even more black exploitation here. Got a uh, urban action cinema. It's like a 15 movie set. Has a uh, Mean Johnny Barrows, Barrows, Lady Coca, Lady Coco, Coca. I don't. I don't um, the Final Countdown, The Black Street Fighter, The Baron, The South Bronx Heroes, The Black Brigade, The Tattoo Connection, The Black Gestapo, The Black Six, Death Journey, um, Get Christy Love, Black Cobra 1, 2, and 3. Which, uh, I can get behind some black exploitation. Those black exploitation films tend to be pretty fun for what they are. Um, if it's just like a cheesy kind of action revenge film. Even more black exploitation. Uh, Dr. Black and Mr. Hyde. Don't know about this one. Only heard of it. But it's very similar to, like, Blackenstein. It's one of those movies that, like, often gets grouped with, like, Blackula. But it's f way more forgotten and pushed to the side than Blackula is. And uh, Blackula is really good. But I haven't seen this one. My favorite thing about this release of Dr. Black and Mr. Hyde is on the back it says... A screaming demon rages inside, turn him into Mr. Hyde. Don't give him no sass or he'll kick yo ass. Which I think is uh, pretty funny. Uh, the Black Gestapo on the Black Six, which this is on that movie set, but these are just like singular, sing there's like a singular release of it from uh, Oldies as well. Uh, I'm interested in seeing the Black Gestapo because 
the title only only tells me that this is like a black Nazi exploitation, a, a black exploitation Nazi exploitation film, which sounds terrible. Um, it would be set featuring Bloody Murder One and Two, Junior, Severed, Children of the Dead, Creepy Crawlers, Deadly Species, and Carnivore. I've never seen any of these, but uh, it looks it looks like an entertaining little set. I know Children of the Living Dead is like written or produced by John Russo, and it's often grouped within the uh, Living Dead series, Romero's Living Dead series. Um, Ash vs. Evil Dead Season 2, which is great. I love Ash vs. Evil Dead. One of my favorite TV series right now. Uh, speaking of great TV series, I got this uh, special limited edition um, VHS release of Stranger Things on Blu-ray and DVD, which it, it looks like a VHS. It's as big as a VHS, and the tape comes out. Well, actually, I think it might be... I'm pretty sure it's bigger than our normal VHS tape. Let's compare using my tape for green room. Okay. So, green room on VHS compared to the Stranger Things special edition. Yeah, that's a bit, that's quite a bit. That's a decent amount bigger. Honestly, the, the case that green room, uh, Honestly, the case that Green Room comes in is like almost as big as the tape. But still, presentation on this release is like fucking key. And then it opens up, and you got season one on Blu ray, and then behind it. Oh, I didn't even know that folded out. I thought it lifted out. It folds out, and then you got season, season one on DVD, season one on Blu ray. It's got an image of the hand reaching out from the tree, and it comes with a little note here. It says, friends don't lie, and a little limited edition, apparently, mini poster, um, which I will unfold because it's pretty, it's pretty, it's a nice poster. It really is. I think it's a pretty nice poster to Stranger Things. Very, very nice. Happy to have this one. Which, I still haven't finished Season 2 of Stranger Things. I probably should hop on that. Um, yeah, Stranger Things. The, the VHS uh, Blu-ray edition. On to the actual, the actual Blu-rays. Uh, so I'll start from the bottom. Got uh, A Cure for Wellness, which I've seen this one. This one's actually pretty good. Like, honestly, visually, it's a masterpiece. Like, visually, this film is absolutely amazing. Um, from, like, an actual storytelling standpoint, the plot is terrible, and nothing makes sense, and it's not like nothing makes sense in the same sense that, like, a Yodorowsky film doesn't make sense, or, uh, Eraserhead doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to a, a point that it's just terrible. But this is still actually a pretty interesting, pretty visually impressive film. I still really like A Careful Wellness. And despite it running for, like, two and a half hours, it doesn't feel like it's two and a half hours long, and I think the visuals are worth are worth seeing, are worth it alone to see this film. Seeing seeing this film for the visuals is worth it alone. Um, the acting in this film is also really good. It's just that the writing and the plot is like all over the place. I got Thingy, Confessions of a Teenage Placenta, um, a film inspired by uh, the works of Frank Henenlotter, very obviously, because the kind of plot feels like something out of a Frank Henenlotter film, something like, um, what is it? I, bad biology or um I'm trying to remember bad biology or like definitely something like basket case essentially Jesus fucking Christ essentially uh, can the thingy the thingy confessions of a teenage placenta is a uh, is this kind of is, is, is a movie essentially about um, a living placenta that goes to high school, and it's weird and gross and stupid. Uh, <laughs> Get Out, one of the best films from this year. Like, I think it makes my top five. I'm going to be making a list as soon as I see The Shape of Water. I will, I will make my list of uh, the best of the year. 
because I get a feeling that that one's going to make it, and if I do the list before I see it, and I'm, I'm going to regret it, most likely. But, Get Out, directed by Jordan Peele, his directorial debut. He says he has a few other horror scripts under his belt um, that he wants to make, which I'm all for. <sighs> Ugh. I got Clue on Blu-ray. Clue is, um... Honestly, this is one of the funniest comedy movies ever made, and it's based on a board game. I love... I love Clue. I love this movie. Uh, the Belco Experiment. This is another one from this year that I think is that I think is gonna make my like top ten. Right now it's like at like twenty five movies for the best of the year. But this one makes my my top ten. It's no like battle royale, but I think it's a really fun movie, really entertaining. Um it doesn't really have a point to it. Like it's not some kind of deep philosophical film about the about the the, the 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 need the primal need within man to commit violent acts or anything. It's nothing like that. It's just a dumb violent action horror film. And honestly that's all I really want from a movie written by uh James Gunn. Uh here we go. Cowboy Bebop the movie. I really like this one. This one I actually watched in like September. And this is really good. This is a good kind of end point for the series. Even though this isn't like the canon ending of the series, like end of Evangelion is the end of Ava, is the end of the series of Evangelion. This is its own kind of spin-off story that is not really in the same universe. Not canon to the universe really, but it's its own thing. A lot of people complain that it isn't that doesn't feel like a Cowboy Bebop episode, and that's kind of the point. It's a movie, not an episode of the TV series. I think it's really good. I think it's fun, entertaining, just just a good time. Uh, got Blackula and Scream, Blackula Scream. Um, what can I say? This is uh, I really enjoyed both of these. I saw these both of these this year actually, and I really really enjoyed them. It's surprisingly, I didn't think I would enjoy them as much as I did, but they're actually really fun movies. And then Blackenstein. The release from uh, Severn. Um, Blackenstein, one of the most like notorious, kind of lesser known cult black exploitation monster movies, very similar to Doctor Black and Mister Hyde. Which uh, this movie has two different cuts of it, and like the backstory to this film is interesting because it was uh, the director. I think the guy who not directed this, I think he may have wrote and produced it. Uh, yeah, the guy who wrote and produced this film, um, he was a criminal lawyer turned film, turned, turned like film producer, and he was murdered in like, I think the 80s? And his murder to this day goes like unsolved. And he was murdered, uh, it's believed he was murdered by, like, a street gang or something, which is interesting, because he was, like, a criminal lawyer turned movie, turned, like, movie maker. And, yeah, this is, like, a movie about a, about a black soldier in Vietnam who gets killed and they turn him into Blackenstein. Why not? On to the CDs, uh, Blood Ceremony, Lord of Miss, yeah, Lord of Misrule. I haven't heard this one from, um, from Blood Ceremony as of yet. I, uh, really like this one, though. I'm not this one, but I really like, um, Blood Ceremony. I think they're a pretty good band. And, uh, Acid Witch Stoned, which I really like Acid Witch as well. There's actually another CD that's, like, on the other side of the room that I gotta grab real quick just to include in this update. Alright, and then this is the other one. This is one I actually bought myself a couple weeks ago, but it's uh, the album Witch Cult Today by Electric Wizard. This one, this, I like Electric Wizard. They're pretty good, like, doom. They're kind of like doom metal horror band that I really enjoy. I can't show the CD because it's got a tit on it. And the uh, little, the yeah, little booklet has nudity all in it, but it, they're an interesting band, and they're the only band to release a song with a title, well, not with a title like, but with a title of this caliber, which is uh, the Satanic Rites of Drugula. That's just awesome. Um, there's also Black Magic Rituals and Perversions, uh, Witch Cult Today, Dunwich, you know, it's 
they're they're a good band. I really like um, Electric Wizard. There's another Blu-ray set I have to show off. This is another one that I did not get as a gift. I bought this for myself because I came into a bit of extra money. This is this is like becoming the crown jewel of my collection, to be honest. Which is why it's, I'm still I keep it in the box it came in. Which I'm not gonna try to spend all day showing this off, but. It's Herschel, It's the Herschel Gordon Lewis Feast from Arrow Video. They're like probably one of their biggest box sets they've ever put out. Um, 14 of his major exploitation films from, I think from 1963 to 1972, including all of his major splatter films. I wish they would have gone up until today and, re and gotten like, and tried to get all of his major splatter films, including Blood Feast 2, The Uh-Oh Show, and um, his most recent one from this year, uh, they got released this year, uh, Blood Mania, because Blood Mania is pretty entertaining. But it's like a fucking cereal box. This thing is fucking huge. Uh, I don't really want to go into it. If you want to see what's all on the inside of this, you can, um, look up an unboxing. I will tell you that it comes with Blood Feast, Scum of the Earth, um, 2000 Maniacs, Moonshine Mountain, Color Me Blood Red, Something Weird, The Gruesome Two, Some A Taste of Blood, She Devils on Wheels, Just for the Hell of It, How to Make a Doll, The Wizard of Gore, The Gore Gore Girls, and This Stuff Will Kill Ya. It also comes with a ton of special features. This is a fucking massive box set in, 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 in actual size and in like the amount of material you get in it. And it's, uh, limited to 2000. I'm happy I uh, picked this up. Let me put this back in its in its coffin because, like I said, I'm I plan on getting a, an actual bookshelf, or an actual shelf on the wall to put all of my expensive Aero box sets on. Which, you know, right now that's only like three expensive ass Aero box sets that I have. Those being the this one, uh, American Horror Project, and. Uh, and the uh, um, Female Prisoner Scorpion box set. But that's a major one. I'm keeping that in the box. Um, I guess since I did CDs, I'll do vinyl next. I got one vinyl album. My sister actually bought me this for Christmas. It's um, Dead Time Stories, the soundtrack on vinyl. Which, I like Dead Time Stories. It's a pretty fun, underrated, overlooked anthology film from the 80s. And... Uh, Honestly, the main reason to own this soundtrack is the theme song to this movie, because the theme song to this movie is, like, absolute classic. But it's got all of the actual, the rest of the music on it, which is really cool. Nice, nice as hell to have, and it's a nice little presentation. Um, I guess I'll get on to some of the other horror memorabilia I've got here. This is a uh, print that I think is, like... Pretty sure it's like a limited edition uh, print that my older sister got me. It, from the looks of it, it's actually signed by the artist. And let me get out a little. Ooh. I think this might actually be like an actual painting, or it's just the paper it's on, but it is a piece based on the masks from Halloween 3, which as I've said before, it's like one of my favorite like movies in the Halloween series, and uh, it's like signed there at the bottom, very, very nice piece, I'm going to put this back in the plastic, nice, nice. Um, print. I think this is actually limited. I actually think it might not be a print, but either way, it's still very, very nice. Keeping that one in the uh, cardboard sleeve that it came in. My older sister got me that, and she also got me this these pins from the same website, um, Cavity Colors. Um, which I'm glad she knows, you know, what I like, because she got me nice, a couple of nice pin sets. The first one she got me, which is this one I know is, like, fucking expensive as hell, is, um, the Nightbreed set, which 
I'm pretty sure this was like a $40 pin set. Like, this is an expensive ass set. Like, that is really nice. I love Nightbreed. It's one of my favorite. Uh, it's definitely my favorite. Um, what is it? Clive Barker film. Oh, man. This has become plastic crinkling ASMR. There we go. And then there's this one, which is one I'm really happy I got because I love this film as well. It's uh, a street trash pin of the uh, guy melting into the toilet. Which street trash is a very, very fun, fun movie. Very fun kind of anti, I think it's an anti like alcoholism film. Which, who isn't anti-alcoholism, honestly, because, let's be honest, if you're for alcoholism, you're kind of an asshole. Um, more horror memorabilia. Got some Funko Pops. Uh, got Carrie, which I'm pretty sure this is, it's supposed to be Sissy Spacex Carrie, which is, is cool and everything. That's nice. I like Carrie. That's a really good movie. Well, the box is a little damaged. Um, got Norman Bates from Psycho. And dressed up as his mother, which is uh, pretty good, honestly. And then this one, which this one has some blood splatter on like the plastic. It's uh, Danny Torrance from The Shining. I would have preferred to get Jack or Wendy, honestly. But Danny is uh, pretty good, anyway. Ooh. And then we got this, which is uh, Stranger Things Monopoly. I don't really know um, what else to say. It, it's Monopoly, but Stranger Things. And it looks... It looks interesting enough, honestly. It's, um... It's nice. Nice enough. I'm not too big on Monopoly, personally, but... That's, you know, kind of a personal thing with me. Uh, here we have a thing that I got that I actually think is really cool that I don't want to, don't want to ruin. I don't want to ruin this because it's a candle and, uh, you know, you, 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 would, you would essentially be ruining it by burning it because it really is, it, it's really nice. It's, uh, I'm gonna get it out of the cardboard, plastic, or pop, bleh, bubble wrap here. It's a Papa Martis Ghost uh, Bust Candle, which I don't think it has a scent to it. I think it's just there to look cool. But it's it's pretty cool, honestly. I like, I like Ghost. I like that band. I think they're a really good band, even though... Uh, Tobias Forge has become a piece of shit. God. Which is a book I've been wanting to read since I saw the film in high school. It's uh, Johnny Got His Gun. Which this is like one of my favorite. The book is one of my favorite book. My, the movie is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's uh, it's it's one of the most depressing fucking things I've ever one of the most depressing movies I've ever read in my entire life. And it's it's a harrowing movie. So I figured I would read the book. Which is, yeah, it's, it's, it's a book. A book's a book. Um, 
Okay, last thing before I get to the shirts and stuff is uh, this Sega Genesis console that actually can play, uh, it can play actual, like, the, like, the actual cartridges, but it comes with 81 preloaded games, and I mean, there's stuff on here like Altered Beast, and Bonanza Brothers, and the Mortal Kombat games, and fucking all, like, all the Sonic games, honestly, and it even comes with, um, Comics Zone, which is one of the, like, underrated gems on the Genesis that I always hear about, that I always wanted to play. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's nice. It's got Virtual Fighter 2, Vector Man, The Ooze, Sonic Spinball. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a nice little, little thing. On to the shirts. Uh, I'll start with the actual... Uh, shirts and stuff that are just random kind of horror shirts because for some reason I got a lot of ghost shirts. Um, the this is the uh, what is it? The fucking Fright Rags Father's Day Creep Show shirt, which I like Creep Show. That's like one of the best anthology horror films. Uh, let me actually just sit all these on my lap and unfold them. This one is uh, Kinky Tricks, which this is like. A Rock Horror Picture Show, like, cereal box design shirt, which that's kind of cool. <clears throat> Got a... Alien shirt from Fright Rags, which is nice. I like Alien. <clears throat> Next is, this is one of the Midnight Madness tees. This is a... Angels and Filthy Souls, based on the uh, fictional mobster film from Home Alone, which that's that's cool. Got and last, most certainly not least, it's a Goosebump shirt. One of the Goosebump shirts, the wear the Abominable Snowman of Pasadena. I remember I had that book, that one as a kid. And on to the ghost stuff, which there's a lot of ghost stuff. All of this is black because that's all I wear. Uh, first is the it's a ghost pop up Martis shirt, which is really nice. Next is a uh, ghost Dracula inspired shirt that has a boob on it, which is kind of surprising coming from a band like Ghost, but oh well. Next is, this is one, I don't even know what to call this design, but it looks, but I like it. It's, it's nice. And then this, I think, is the, yeah, this is the one based on their first album, Eponymous Opimus, which, like that album. And then here, we have a, we have the actual Fright Rags, uh, Ghost Hoodie, which is also very, very nice. I'm happy because I needed a new hoodie. Uh, I think that's it, actually. Oh, one more thing that my cousin got me. Actually, a couple more things that my cousin got me. Cousin got me this uh, Star Wars um, collectible Pez dispenser tin, which is cool. You know, it's cool. It's got a uh, BB-8, Ray, and uh, Han Solo, and. Chewy, I'm a I'm a Star Wars fan. I saw I saw uh, I saw uh, the Last Jedi when it came out. I thought I enjoyed it. It's not great, but it's fun. And then I got some some uh, some Fallout Crew socks, which they're officially licensed as Fallout Four, but we all know that Fallout Four is not a Fallout game. It's it's its own thing. Um, uh, ugh, that is it. That is actually it for this uh, Blue Ready Week collection update. Anyway, guys, this is Biscuit Boo Horror Reviews. Signing off. Peace.